Okay, hello. So today I'm going to be talking to you about the Sonic reference architecture for AI developer experiences in platform engineering. We're going to do a bit of a deep dive into a few different dimensions of AI when it pertains to platform and, you know, talking through a few different components so you can start to build out your foundation for your developers to build out developer productivity when it comes to AI and AI developer tooling. I'm hoping that we talk about some concepts here today that you can take away, research and go even deeper on uh, at a later time. But otherwise, let's get into it and let's have a run through this reference architecture. Now, first, in terms of introductions, my name is Lou and I work as a field CTO here at a company called Gitpod. We are a platform for secure automated development environments. We'll talk a bit more about that in a second as well when we get into the presentation. My background is in platform engineering, used to work on the platform team at a company called The Zone in terms of building out their developer experience. And before that, I was a software engineer for a whole range of different companies here in London. And then for fun, I like to do a lot of Olympic weightlifting. And a bit of a running joke is that my hobby is at this point collecting hobbies. I have far too many of them uh, to list here on this slide, but you can grab me as well on Twitter or LinkedIn if you want to as well. But otherwise, let's get into it. So if we have a look at the state today of coding assistants, AI, and AI agents. The progress has been incredible from what we can do and the impact that AI is having on our developer experience. But what we see if we look across the board and we look across the ecosystem is we have a whole bunch of different challenges, particularly around security, access control, and governance around AI flows, especially when it comes to agents which are more autonomous and can work on our behalf. What we see is things like unrestricted agent access. We've got agents running on machines that aren't necessarily isolated, which means they can gain access to things that they shouldn't have access to, whether that's files, credentials, keys, or even source code that those agents shouldn't be able to access. That gives us also blind spots, you know, as centralized teams or as, as platform or security teams, we really need to understand what data or what source code is flowing in which directions. We don't necessarily want clients connecting directly to AI models. And then if those agents themselves are compromised in any way, we need to know, we need an audit trail of what actions the agents are taking. We need visibility. We get in contamination across different projects. Let's say running source code alongside other different source code. We're not isolating. We're not seeing isolation between those different projects that might require different guardrails and different levels of security. And then we can also, when we have long running environments, have vulnerabilities that then persisted over the long term because they're on individual devices that aren't necessarily ephemeral, aren't necessarily destroyed, destroyed or turned down uh, frequently. And finally, we just have inconsistent controls. Like it's not easy to right now across developer tools to be able to apply security controls and governance to be able to help our developers do the right thing and the secure thing, because a lot of those settings and things like that are delegated to the developer, which is good in terms of having the freedom to make all these decisions. But especially if you're a secure organization or a regulated organization, this poses a really big challenge to adopting and rolling out AI developer tools. So let's talk about the Sonic architecture then. So this is an architecture that we talk a lot with our customers, and it's just a sort of high level ecosystem map of some of the different components that you're going to want to have in place when it comes to AI and developer productivity. So we break this down into five different areas. So we've got integration surface area, which is what your developers or end users are interacting with. It could be their editors, AI editors like cursor or assistants like Copilot whether that's through UIs and chat interfaces and portal plugins, a lot of these are starting to have AI capabilities and that's how the end user or developer will interact with that AI tool. In addition to that, we need observability, right? We need to understand usage, cost, and what's the ROI of the different tools that we're investing in. Networking in terms of where are those tools, those LLMs, those models actually deployed to and what do they have access to within our network? Integration for things like context, for models, for memory, long-term memory for agents, and then also compute. So where do those agents and where do those models actually run? We need to think about that as well. So I'm going to do a deep dive into a few of these areas. We don't have time to go through all of it. And also it's going to depend as well a lot on your individual company and your architecture. Now, when it comes to developer productivity and AI, what we're effectively seeing now is an emergence of these two different types of modalities. One is foreground and one is background. Foreground agents are ones that run in, like, say, your editor or your CLI, actually on your machine. And there's going to be a strong amount of human in the loop interactions there. So agents running, but also speaking to an access, you know, requesting the human that's actually working with that to uh, authorize specific actions. 
But then what we're seeing now is this emergence of background agents, which are working in the background. They can run in parallel. They can run asynchronously and they can run for a long period of time. But in order to unlock that, what we effectively need is freedom to operate in a secure environment. We need the context in order to do the job at hand. If that's a feature, a bug, or fixing an operational task, we need context from our internal systems. And then eventually we'll actually need new forms of interaction because if we have this increased disengagement with agents where they're working autonomously, the UX and the systems and the SDLC that we're working with will fundamentally change and that will require different tools. And as platform teams, we have to start thinking about that. But let's take a little bit of a step back here first, because let's do a bit of an agent primer. I've mentioned agent a few times, and this is a certainly a loaded term. Now, it's a primitive level. You can think about an agent as an LLM in a loop or a large language model iterating in a loop. But one of the main things that makes agents so powerful is that they have access to things like tools. Now, a tool can be a request to fetch data. It can be an API call that fun fundamentally makes some change in the outside world outside of where that agent is operating. It can pull in data to make decisions on, and it can iterate in a loop until the task that it's actually working on is then complete. This is incredibly powerful, it unlocks whole manners of different use cases from actually writing software for us to completing operational tasks. But it also brings with it a manner of challenges that as platform engineers that we now need to start thinking about and how we start preparing for the future with these agents that can work autonomously and integrate into these other systems. Now, the main thing that I think that you need to understand about agents is this idea of tool use or function calling. Now, Tool use is effectively the way that models can understand and interact with the outside world. Now, if you look at this diagram on the right-hand side, you have this interaction simplified between the developer or, the, or uh, the, you know, the developer tool that they're actually interacting with and then the model. In this case, it's making a request to the model and it's passing over two things. It's giving tools definitions and it's giving a prompt or a question saying, what's the weather in Paris? In this case, the model is actually looking and seeing that, well, actually we've been given this get weather tool or function call, and then it returns back to the application and says, hey, could you actually execute that before I answer your question? Because that seems like it would be useful context for me to have. That's then executed somewhere. We can talk a little bit about where that somewhere is in a second, but that's then returned to the model, the actual result of that function call, including all the prior message and the original prompt that was asked. And that's then returned back to the user with the final response, because now the AI feels confident that it's got the context using the tools in order to answer the question. Now, as platform engineers, we need to start thinking about, okay, so if our tools are starting to work in this sort of agentic flow, what does that mean uh, for us as our platform in terms of what we're building? But we need to think about how do we govern this process? How do we decide what agents have access to which tools? We need to understand what would be potentially our audit flow and how do we get visibility over these various different tool calls that are made? Now, one emerging standard that's helping us with that is MCP. You might have seen it if you spent any time online. The internet has been blowing up with this for the last couple of months. But it's Model Context Protocol, which is an open protocol that's been developed by Anthropic. And it's designed to add a bit of structure into how those agents actually make those tool calls and request context to make decisions. Now, you can see here we've got a more advanced sequence diagram that introduces a few more layers. Now, what you see here is actually we still have the same sort of client, which is like the developer and the LLM, but now we have the model context protocol server, and we also have an external data source. That external data source could be a Kubernetes cluster, database, S3 bucket, anything actually um, that we want to interact with. So that again, developer makes that request and passes it through to the LLM. In this case now, what we're actually doing is the MCP server is now the source of truth for what tools are available to the model. The query is made, those tools calls are passed, that's then given back from the LLM. Now the part that's different here as well is that client then actually passes that request to the MCP server and says, hey, can you execute this tool? Which then goes out to that external data source. That then comes back and then it's passed into the LLM. Similar to what we mentioned before about tools use, but now we have the MCP almost acting as, access, <laughs> acting as this sort of proxy layer for accessing these external data. So as platform teams, we can start to use MCP servers provided by vendors, but we can also start to think about how we actually build these for our developers so that we can expose internal context, if that may be source code, databases, APIs, platform services to our developers. And in a way, I actually think we should start thinking about MCP as almost like an internal developer portal for agents. 
We have portals for humans where they can access all of the different platform capabilities. But MCP is now almost giving us the platform to do that for autonomous agents. And we need to start thinking about how that works with that platform. One common additional pattern that we're starting to see with a lot of customers that we work with is also the idea of an AI gateway. Without an AI gateway, requests are made from clients to different models, whether that's Anthropic or OpenAI or wherever else those are hosted. But an AI gateway takes all of those different models that your organization has access to, consolidates it through a central sort of ingress point, and then developers can go through that AI gateway. That effectively gives us the ability to route across different models for different requests, allows us to cache, which means we can cache specific prompts, which can improve our cost. You know, we can apply rate limiting and security. We can check prompts for injection or secure or sort of secure secrets, leakage, things like that through the implementation of this AI gateway. So that's a pattern we're seeing a lot. And I think what we're going to see is more and more developer tools that have an AI or a model integration integrate with some of these different AI gateways that exist. We're seeing some from vendors like Kong and from others like that as well. Open router is also quite a popular AI gateway. Now, as we move towards this world of AI agents, agents effectively also need an environment to access on, especially when it comes to writing code or running commands. Now, if you've used any of the latest AI editors, you will be familiar with this flow, where an agent is able to take a prompt, iterate over the file system, make files, delete files, run commands, and do all of that autonomously. But as a precursor to that, we need to have a secure and isolated environment. Going back to those previous points, we want to isolate agent runs from each other. We want to make sure they have access only to the things that they need. And we want to make sure that they're packaged with all of the dependencies and everything that they need to run. Because this sort of works on my machine problem is now manifesting all over again, rather than works on my machine for humans, it's also we're seeing works on my machine problems applying also to agents. And Dev Container can help us with that, which effectively is an open standard from Microsoft packages all of your different dependencies and everything into a declarative configuration, it creates you an isolated development container that you develop inside of. The thing that's really cool about this is it's very powerful. It doesn't necessarily, it's not constrained to individual containers. You can run multi-container workflows as well. It's not just necessarily for running small or simple applications. So coming back to some of those original pain points that we talked about before. What we want to start to do is isolate agents. We want to start to think about how do we provide APIs for the context that they're accessing, maybe by either A, installing and using MCP servers, or even looking into building some of our own on top of our existing platform APIs. We want to start to think about how do we start to take our individual projects and isolate them and make sure that identity, access, secrets management is all scoped down. So a lot of those initiatives that we've had maybe for the next, last couple of years to implement things like HashiCorp Vault or Secrets Managers all become even more important now when it comes to unleashing agents within inside of our organizations to work on behalf of our developers to be able to do autonomous work, fleets of agents effectively doing software for us. And this is something that at Gitpod we've been doing for quite some time is developer productivity for humans, but now also for agents. It turns out everything that an agent needs to do software engineering is exactly what humans always needed as well. And at the foundational level, that is understanding the computer where that, you know, a development environment or agent runs, those needs packages, dependencies, and that comes through your dev container. You can then run those agents, whether that be a editor based agent or a CLI or a vendor specific one, we get audit and visibility into those. That's something that we've been doing here at Gitpod for many years. And then you did interfaces, as we talked about, in order to unlock this new future of parallel and background agents, we now need to start thinking about how does our UX and our user experience look for our platform and our developers when we have these background tasks that are being completed for us or on our behalf. Now in Gitpod, we've been cooking up something really cool that we think you're going to like a lot. You can find it over at owner.com. And this is very much in line with everything that I've just been talking about here today, building for this future of parallelism, background tasks, and as we increase the time between disengagements of working with agents, they become more and more autonomous. We need to start rethinking our developer tools and making sure our secure foundation is put in place. So if that's something that you're looking into, something you might be interested in, head over to owner.com and you can have access to uh, get onto the waitlist for owner itself and have a look at the vision and see what we're building. It's very exciting. We're in a whole new era of software engineering, and we think you're going to really like this one as well. 
So there we go, a quick run through of the Sonic reference architecture that we go through with a lot of our customers here at Gitpod, and a little bit of an introduction to things like MCP, to tool use, to AI, and starting to think about how that might integrate into your platform as well. If you're at PlatformCon in person in London or in NYC, we'll have a booth, head over there and speak to us about it. If you want, we're happy to give you a demo, show you some of the AI capabilities that you have inside of it. Gitpod for securing development environments, not just for humans, but now also for agents. If you're at KubeCon, if you're at um, Platform Engineering Day, we'll also be there as well, AWS reInvent later on in the year. But otherwise, thank you so much for having me and have a great PlatformCon. I shall see you soon. Thank you very much. Bye.